Hello, I'm Brent Ferris from the Bearded Man Studios, and in this tutorial we're going to be taking the example tic-tac-toe game, which is going to be linked with this video tutorial, and uh, implementing Forge Networking so that it's multiplayer. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to uh, drag in the Forge tic-tac-toe Unity package into my assets and import it. And then I will drag, I'm going to be using release version 3, of Forge Networking, I'll drag that into the assets and import that. Okay, now that everything's imported, you'll find inside of the tic-tac-toe, there's a tic-tac-toe scene. And uh, inside of here, there's a board, there's uh, a whole setup for the grid and a bunch of colliders for us to click on. So, basically the very first thing that we need to do is uh, we need to set up so that we can actually play it and see if it works. So make sure that you have your setup over here. If you import the package, it should work fine. We have player one wins, player two wins, uh, cat wins, the X, the O, and then the spaces should all be set up. And it should start on player one's turn. Instead of the prefabs, we have the X and the O. So if you're curious where those prefabs are. So if we play right now, It'll play uh, on just offline, so we can uh, click in the spaces and see who wins and the score. And we can press spacebar to reset. So, and the score will keep occurring up uh, for player one, player two, and the cat. So what we want to do is we want to make it so that player one is the server and player two is the client, and they can go back and forth. So. What we're going to do is we're going to open up the board manager script, which you'll find on the board. And inside this script, we're going to start off by importing the network libraries uh, up at the top using beardedmanstudios.network. And we're going to convert this class to being a simple networked model behavior because we're going to be making use of the RPC calls uh, so that we can uh, set up the remote behaviors. So what we're going to do first is we're going to override the start and the update because those have base behaviors instead of the simple networked mono behavior. So we're going to change this to protected override start and we're going to change this to protected override update. And in both of those we're also going to be doing the base.start and the base.update. So now what we're going to do is that we're going to identify the RPC methods that we need to, uh, or the methods that are primarily going to become RPCs. So the update is not, the setup is not, because that's just the method we call in here. The place piece is going to be an RPC because we're going to send that across the network to say place a piece. The winner is going to be one, so we can uh, send out who wins from the server. And the reset game is going to be another so that we can set it up uh, so that when we reset the game uh, it will go across the network as well. Evaluate board doesn't need to be one uh, nor does equals. So to set up those RPC methods we're going to go to the top of them and we're going to do an attribute. Uh, we're going to do BRPC on the place piece. We're going to do a BRPC on winner and we're going to do a BRPC on the reset game. So now that we've changed those to be RPCs, we need to go wherever these are called and change them to be called as RPCs. So we can uh, check out where this is called. It's called in this reference instead of the update reset game here whenever the spacebar is pressed. So we're going to change that to RPC and then turn that to a string. So now that is going to be networked. We have place piece, which has one reference. So we'll go to that. Here it is. We're going to change this to RPC, turn place piece into a string, and we're going to pass I as the argument. And then the last one that we did was winner, which has four references, so luckily they're right near each other. So all of these uh, re winners are going to be on my RPCs, so RPC, turn it to a string, and board four is going to be uh, what's going to be sent through. So 
So on this one, it looks like we have a bug here, and we'll have this fixed whenever we send out the package, but this should be zero. And now we're going to do this winner, RPC. And this one should actually be eight. Okay. Uh, and then we have one more winner down here for the cat. So we're going to do RPC winner for that. Awesome. Now we've set up all of our RPC methods. What we need to do now is identify the places that only the server should be doing. So one of the things that I want is I want the server to be the only thing that evaluates the board. Since both the server and the client are going to be calling place piece whenever a piece is placed, we can make it so that the server is the only thing uh, that calls evaluate board. So we're going to say if owning a networker dot is server, then evaluate the board. That means the client will not go through this call. So only the server will check the game rules. Okay, so you notice that whenever we played the game originally, uh, I could just continuously click forever and uh, set all the pieces. We don't want that. We only want the current player to be able to place a piece. So we're going to go up to the update where it calls that and we're going to prevent anything from happening if it's not our turn. So we're going to say if uh, player one turn is not equal to owning networker dot is server return. So basically we're saying uh, if it's player one's turn and it's not the server, meaning that uh, that it's uh, the client, then it's not our turn. So we return. However, if it's players two stern, it's not the server. That means it's a client, and it continues. So that one check right there is going to prevent uh, the server and the client from being able to take each other's turns. Okay, so with that, we can save and jump over and check our compilation. And everything compiled fine. So now it's time to test it. Let's clear out our logs. Let's go to our build settings. And now we need to... Uh, include this scene so we're going to add current the tic-tac-toe and we need to include the menu because the menu is actually going to be what's uh, going to start up the server and serve the client so forge quick start menu let's drag that before tic-tac-toe in our settings let's also make sure that our run and background is on and let's set it up so that it loads the tic-tac-toe scene so instead of canvas uh, you'll find the scene name. We'll switch this to tic-tac-toe so that it loads up the tic-tac-toe scene and we'll test it to make sure it's working. So I'll press play here and I'll host. And I should be able to place a cube and not place anything else. So this is working great. So now I'm just going to build it out and we're going to test our game. So I'm going to just do windowed mode. 640 by 480, just a small window, so that we're able to uh, see it on the screen here. And I'm going to snap this to the side so that I can see both the window and the Unity editor. So I'm going to play. Let's widen this up a little bit. So I can make either one the server. I'm going to make the editor the server. I'm going to find on land for the client here. So the server goes first. Notice the client can't place anything. So place on the server, it'll go on the client, place on the client, server, client, server. The server is one, and the client still was able to place a piece. So we're missing a piece of code where they aren't able to do this. So let's press spacebar and see if it resets. So it resets fine. So now let's just fix that bug of it being able to uh, continue playing one more time after the game is over. So let's go over to our code. Right, so I did some digging on that, and what actually happened was my scripts weren't compiling. So now that I got them compiling, uh, we can jump back and do a rebuild. And uh, check it out. So now that this is built, we'll check it out. We'll play this one. Play this one over here. Let's get this screen out of our way. All right, host the server. Join on LAN. So dot, 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 dot. So now we see that the player one won a game, and this is player one. So we can reset, and now player two gets to go first. 
just because of order of operations. Now we'll see that player two wins, and now player two has a score. So finally, we'll do a cat win, which I always mess up on somehow. I'm playing against myself here. Yeah, I got one. All right. And so cat wins, and now we have a cat there. So that's how we can convert this whole tic-tac-toe project into being multiplayer. So I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, until next time, uh, just leave any questions, uh, ask anything, give some feedback. We're completely open to everything. So until next time, thank you very much, and I'll talk to you later.